It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Mike in the building. Yo, 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 yo. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm fine. Courtesy of Obi uh, What happened? Ow. I'm fine. Ah, she spoiled me yesterday. Oh. Mm. Are you serious? Please tell us about <laughs> it. I slept like a baby. Be Wait for a masseuse. Hey, I, no, hey. I didn't go. She sent Bumi, them to yari? my house. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> they came to your house. Ah, ah. Hey. And you had those kind of uh, connections. Hey. They would come and they came to... Over one hour, I was just doing... Hey, my yeah. God. Wow. In fact, so, I was even snoring. So, so usually you have the connect. Of course. Now, nah, is it not... It's what I do. Yeah. So, when we spoke, before she came back, she said she was really tired because of the mm. stress of handling grandkids and all of that. Now she said, worry, I owe you a massage when you get back. And she got it yesterday. Now send them to her house. That's hey, that's how you roll. I love that. Hey. That's hey. nice. Wait, happen. I'm noting things soon. Uh, what mm. are you noting? This <laughs> <laughs> is a sleeping beauty. Mm. You see the sleep she was sleeping <laughs> in the makeup room. Are you serious? I woke up and said, Nima. Nima is... What's up? I drove myself this morning. I miss oh, driving oh. myself. My uh, oh, you have a driver now? No. No. TV has to pick and drop me because we're doing the oh. But this morning I took my car. How are you doing? How are you doing? Tired. I'm very well, very well. You I'm deserve a vacation. Behind. You do. My husband is already insisting on one. Mm. Maybe at the end of Ramadan. Yes. Yeah, you need to be nice. somewhere. Mm. Even if it's a staycation for just the somewhere, weekend. just somewhere. Let's let's lose you for and two then touch you daughter. properly and rearrange your wires. Hey, hmm. now you they talk that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just that, that, that does not finish your fast. What do I keep saying? That's fast. Let me just tell you. <laughs> let her, I got you. Let her fast go and damage you. Don't be. You see, I shouldn't have spoken about it because jealousy, jealousy. No. So you were in the UK when she assured that you. Sure that you Maybe you are here with me now. I'm still here. Finish your work. Anyways, let me come to you. How are you doing? talking about her hair. Oh. Obi Ajinu's hair in the building. What's up with this hair? Is that your hair? Is that all your shall be hiding is smoothing away? Wonder her wig. Wonder her wig. Now she launched it. Just for one week. Just for one week. You don't know what it took me to, you know, drag and comb and all that. Strength is what God gave you. And you should flaunt it and you should display it. All those things that you are wearing. And see, I don't have hair. See, all this from the nothing day. You should be thanking God for hair. I don't have hair. I'm grateful to God, but I can't do this dress every day. If I had your hair, I would flaunt it. Just for the week. If I had your hair. Just for the week. Okay, next week is my birthday. I'm going to wear the hair. I'm posting my birthday. Our day is coming. You're looking. I can see you're preparing. See, you're looking. No, yeah, thank Everything you. Is all you know her skin. So, are you going to tell us how you're going to be? No, no. 16 for life. <laughs> thank you, YK. Mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. No, 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 tell YK your secret. Oh. What, what, what's your birthday wish? Uh, Maybe your fans are here watching and they're thinking, okay, we're going to bless Obiajili. What's that thing you wish to have mm. next week? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so ask you again next time. <laughs> I don't you know. I honestly don't it, know. You know? I would, I, would, I, would, I would really like to get you something special. Aww. I love your nails. They're wikey. Yeah, she's yeah. around. Yeah. I love your nails. are very wikey. It was wikey's color. Honestly, self. I should have just collected that out. Uh, I'm telling you, this is wikey's color. You did it. It's very, very. I'm like, how do you guys do the, all the stuff with this stuff? Wikey, um, eh. Uh, uh, move on. Your but, nails look painted. Yes, I did my nails, now. but this is like high level. Mm. Like, I don't know if I have the stones. Oh, yeah, right? like, why would you put stones I'm on I'm getting nails? ready for my birthday. Like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering how people. My months. Do all the cleaning and everything with the stones. Yeah, I yeah. don't clean. It is your month, Jerry. My month. Enjoy. Let me it's enjoy. It's birthday too on Saturday. Ah, yeah. how old is he? 70? 65. Why ah. are you rushing him? Oh, he's just a few years older than you. You're like age mates. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, don't you know, like, I always do something guess. for him now. Me? You. Mm -hmm. The last time I did surprise party, the disgrace it disgraces me. You. I never done party for him again since then. Yes, so. uh, Same thing that happened with Kobe Brown. Then I was mm -hmm. like, like when he did 40 years, I didn't come surprise you. That I can disgrace it, disgrace it. Are you kidding? No, I, we were there now. He enjoyed it. No. The 40th, but no, the kids, we're going to come buy him special gifts. Mm, okay. He rejected all the gifts. It's the gift, you still won't forget. <laughs> I will never forget that gift. I, I, I still want the shorts, the gifts. I still want the shorts. <laughs> okay. my mother, my daughter, I, mean, I like your parents. I think that the shorts that we're going to buy for your dad, when he was 40, and he rejected. 
So, <laughs> I can never forget that. Since that time, I've not bought him any gifts. Are we still doing this paper today? Because I'm Oh, let's go on a break. We have, we have time. Have time. That's oh, we have time. Oh, wow. I didn't know. Let's so go on a short break. On Sunday. Please remind me to do this. Your show. husband is March, too. Yes, on Sunday after Uncle Tio. Let's go on a break. Wow. I've forgotten that we're on TV, that we have work to do. We're just just in a way. We should relax Please. sometimes. Let's go on a break. And it's only Tuesday. We never ah. reached for Thursday. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Undo APC members advance support for Jimo um, Ibrahim. Amit to Delta community identify killers. 85 abducted in Kaduna. <coughs> Edo 2024. Okpebulu, Idahosa gets in Umbu's backing. Ulubadon, Fidao for Makbu. Services affected by undersea cable cuts restore, says NCC. After sacking seven. 12 more CBN directors to go. Okay, which story are we starting with? So I have the Army to Delta community story. So the Nigerian Army, through the um, defense spokesman, Major General Edward Buba and his counterparts, Oyama Wachuku, yesterday released the names on X of the officers that were killed. The, sh should I go ahead and name the names? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so they named the list as a, a literal colonel <coughs> A.H. Ali, Major, Major Safa, Major D.E.O.B., and Captain U. Zakaria, the major officers uh, on the team. And the soldiers are Staff Sergeant Yaya Saidu, Corporal Yaya Dambabu, Dambaba Corporal Kabir Bashir, Lance Corporal Bulus Haruna, Shole um, Okoyemi, Belo Anas, Aman, Peter, and Ibrahim Abdullahi, and the rest are Private Aladi Isa, Clement Francis Abubakar Ali, Ibrahim Adamu, and Adamu Ibrahim. And they, you know, so, yeah. you know tweeted that they should rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And then the father went on to dispel all uh, comments that they had the reprisal attack at that community. He said that we should completely disregard any of such statements that, you know, that suggests that they had a reprise out there, that these are evil people trying to... Um, <clears throat> uh, propaganda that will prevent military from complying with the president's order, which is, of course, that they should deal with the situation and investigate and find out the people behind it. They said that but, uh, they are peddling falsehood by um, people whipping up sentiments and swaying the public to cover up, endorse or support the outrageous criminal acts of their armed youth mm. gang should be... Uh, against the army, and it should be disregarded totally. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Ms. Yeah, um, so, okay, go ahead. Uh, no, go on. Go on. Um, I have the story about uh, Kaduna. It said Kaduna has become a hotbed of abductions. We know March 7th, 287 people were adopted, um, abducted from the local education authority, uh, primary school in Kuriga, Chiku local government area of Kaduna. They are still not um, have been rescued. Uh, last Monday, again, I took the story that about 61 persons were abducted by suspected terrorists who attacked the Buddha community in Kaduna local government area of Kaduna state. And now they said it is six persons were kidnapped on Sunday night, just this Sunday, 
and um, you know the bandits invaded the Kajuru station, a community in Kajuru local government area of the state, and kidnapped the 86 persons. They said they broke into shops, scattered away food items and other valuables, and they invaded the village with uh, sophisticated weapons at about 10 p.m. when they you know had their way. Uh, but uh, a member of the House of Representatives in the morning said that by the time he had gone there to check on what had happened, they had not seen police uh, officers coming to, you know, settle the people. And the villagers are traumatized that the government needs to re-strategize in tackling these uh, terrorists. They are also waiting for, you know, the military to do something about this. So uh, the Chief of Defense Staff General, Christopher Musa, uh, said the military was working tirelessly to free abducted pupils and the security you know, um, machinations and machineries will be, you know, getting really deep into this and they will bring every evil machination to justice. Uh, while he said this, he had visited the uh, governor of um, Kaduna State to commiserate with the people over the Kuriga school incident that happened. And he was saying that it, it, it seemed that some individuals were working against the state, against the administration to destabilize the country. And they are working to see how they can get them and punish them. Okay. Um, the eighth day um, Fidel oh. prayer for the uh, for mm. the late Ulubado. Yeah, is going to hold on the on Friday, and they're holding it at the Mapo Hall. They, they can't do it in his house because of the huge um, crowds that they are expecting. Um, they're waiting, also waiting for the governor to come back. <clears throat> and he was his family were visited. He, he was only two years in yeah in, on the stool. on the, sto on the stool. The former chief of staff, Buratai, went to visit him. You know, he had been given an, an honorary yeah. title by the other, you know, and he said he was a guy, great guy, he was a nice, nice friend and everything. So they are all mourning him. And after 21 days, they will name the next Ulu. Oh, oh. Ulu Badon. Mm, Ulu okay. Yeah, I won't so take that thing. <clears throat> what would you have done? So let me take that as a follow-up from the Jim Obaze report, if you recall, uh, Jim Obaza was appointed as a special investigator by the president to scrutinize the activities of CBN. So um, seven directors of the CBN have been sacked. Although two have accepted their fate, five others are challenging the sack, saying that they, did no, um, they had no wrongdoing. Um, according to this report, 12 more directors of the CBN are expected to <coughs> get their letters um, soon. According to this report, it said that... Um, these five directors have decided to challenge their termination because, according to them, no wrongdoing has been linked to them, and they have not been implicated in any misconduct. One of the directors affected has just two years, two months left in office, and they're saying that part of the, um, the consequence of this attack is the fact that they're not going to get their, they're, going to, they're not going to be given their benefits, um, uh, especially considering their years of service and absence in the charges. So two have accepted their fate. They've left CBN. Five are challenging <coughs> it, and we're expecting 12 more to be sacked in the coming days, wow. based on this Obazi. We wanted to see the report, but they didn't expose it to us. They didn't give it to us. I'm not sure. Like only know that I, I didn't hear of the report. What, what happened? So, you know, the president had hired a special investigator to mm. look at the activities of CBN, mm. all the issues, especially after the um, MFLA. MFLA thing happened. So they got in someone, and he, he had concluded the report and handed it over to the president. Mm. We thought we'd get excerpts of it, but we didn't, it wasn't uh, released Made to the public. Mm. But now they're already acting on that report, and mm. that's what we're saying that's happening mm. in CBN. Ah, maybe they will stop selling money outside. Moving on now to the <laughs> punch. Soldiers killing army Delta community differ over reprisal as <coughs> troops arrest 20. Dollar supply rises to a billion dollars. Naira closes as 1,572 Naira to the dollar. Cable call telcos pledge 100% voice data services today. Rep someone Edu Aramfak over the judge's poor pay. Withheld salary Sanu Nasu strike grounds varsities. EFCC recovers 324 houses, documents for Kano pen <coughs> pensioners. 87 abducted in fresh Kaduna raid, Borno bomber dies. And tension in Ogun as transport unions clash over ticket sales. Okay, which story are we starting with? Uh, go on. Okay, so last Thursday, I don't know which one you took. <laughs> uh, they were caught in the undersea cable supply. Good. Uh, supplying broadband internet connectivity to Nigeria and countries in the West African sub-region. Uh, that made uh, many banks, financial institutions, telecoms, um, company and allied firms to scale down their 
operation. So the companies affected were the West African Cable System and African Coast to Europe on the West Coast routes from Europe, both of which have had experienced faults. Then additionally, SAT-3, the main one, had reported downtime over the cable. However, the Association of Licensed Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria said that the voice and data services affected by the cut in the undersea fiber optics along the coast of Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal will be completely restored on Sunday. They had said uh, yesterday that 90% uh, of the services have been restored, but now they are saying they are going to be completely restored. Uh, they had all those... Um, you know, telecommunications had to find an alternative route to yeah. divert their, you know, their services. But now, with the restoration, I think they will go back and some of the delays would have been lifted. Yeah. So there's good news for those uh, who challenge. I think we should go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Oh, hello guys, come closer. Now this is not a magic trick, but I'm about to show you the best breakfast show. Hey host, I can tell you that being a parent is one of the biggest reality shows you'll ever produce. Hi. Oh, yeah. So, while they learn through play, you can go about getting your pay. The TVC Staff Crash, open to the public from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. Thanks for staying with us. Still reviewing Punch. Uh, Nima had a story. Go ahead, please. Uh, dollar supply rises to $11 billion. So the CBN has been able to show from what they had before, which was $5 billion, they've been able to make it, you know, supply dollars up to $11 billion to meet the FX demands and, you know, prevent um, the parallel market from moving away again from the official market. Oh, sorry, official rate. And this is a welcome one. According to this um, group, the FMDQ, they are a platform that publishes official exchange trading um, in the country. They said the figure rose from rose by 185.75%, which is about 7.43 billion between January and March 15th. So well done to the CBN. The Nigerians will still demand dollars to go for a conference in a place that, you know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Even though we have genuine demands for them. But you see, I'm happy that I hear that they, 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 they've opened up the 43 of the list items, items yes, have yes. been all lifted. And the reason is because 
for you to you don't, you don't need to even put any policies to stop you mm. when you are when you when you put the cost of let the price, calculate the price on, if somebody will be able to buy it then you now bring it yeah. so yourself you look yeah. within so you don't have to restrict any we'll items be able anymore to keep it at 1500 which is good. the market is eventually going to find its own level mm. eventually mm. Right. okay wow. let's take another say the um there was um the Ogun transport uh, unions there was uh, tension in Ogun State, the, in Abekuta, as members of the National Union of Transport Workers and the Ogun State Park and Garages Management Board clashed over the revenue collection. So the affected motor parks were Kuto, Lafenwa, Brewery, Itaoshi, Obantoko, among others. They said that um, gunshots, there were gunshots, and they were said to have macheted macheted themselves. Mm. Um, they said the cause of this thing is because uh, they had um, reinstated the leadership of Alaji Ismail to the NURT W. Uh, he was known as Yao to be collecting the week's revenue. But uh, it was now the turn of the OG, the other one, OG S Spam. And they, this was said no. It's not, it's not their turn, so that's what caused... They, they gave a new RTW two weeks, and them and the other RTAN one, one week. Mm. <laughs> that's where Katakata now boasts. Uh, police had to come in. Police are there stopping them from fighting. And killing everybody each other. Is, from killing each other. Can you imagine? <clears throat> All right, let me move on to and the... They are collecting it on behalf of the government, too. Not Which? for themselves, though. So uh, I have a story concerning the remuneration of our justices. So during a valedictory session, uh, retired Justice Musa Datijo of Supreme Court had revealed that justices of the Apex Court were poorly paid. According to his report, he said that the chief registrar of the Supreme Court earns more than the justices themselves. He says while she earns 1.2 million naira per month, um, justices take home about 750,000 naira. The CGN on his part takes home 400,000 naira plus. Uh, the salary of the justice curiously drops rather than increase when um, he, they get added responsibility of being the CGN. So he was just making this, um, uh, was, was, was really complaining on this. And then the, um, the House of Reps have actually asked the judiciary, they invited the judiciary and the ministers of finance, budget, and national planning, Wali Adun, and uh, the National Judicial Council for deliberation on why our justices are poorly paid. So hopefully they should honor those invitations and then be able to find some kind of lasting solution to this poor remuneration of our justice system. Moving on now to daily sun tension spreads from Delta to Bayelsa over soldiers' murder. Court to hear Nam, uh, Nam Dekano's 1 billion naira suit against federal government and DSS on April 18th. Nigeria, no progress without new constitution. True federalism says Ayanku, Adebanjo, Duke, Tambo, and others. Sanu Nasu, strike disrupt activities in varsities. Ningi, you're eating PDP script, you're, you're acting PDP script, Arewa plays ACF. FCT, WK orders reshuffling of directors, and OB demands 2024 budget review, urges reallocation of resources. Okay, which story? Okay, I can take the National President, Nigerian Labor Congress, Joe Ajero, has called on the federal government to pay the four months withheld salaries of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities and Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational Associated institutions. Uh, this was also in reaction to the seven-day warning strike that Sanu and Nasu started on Monday. Uh, they said it grounded universities across the country. And um, they said for about a month now, they had called on the attention of the government to, um, to the exclusion from payment of the withheld salaries, which commenced payment for the academic staff union of universities. So we know that during the uh, former administration, uh, President Muhammad Buhari had invoked a no work, no pay a policy against ASU and uh, SANU as well for um, embarking on a strike that lasted eight months and four months in 2022 respectively. And, you know, they had talked about it and the government had decided to start paying them back. But now they are paying just ASU. They, have, they are not paying SANU. SANU is, uh, you know, the, uh, what's it called again? Uh, I'm trying to get 
what it's called, but they are not collecting their monies and they are saying there's no credible reason or explanation for withholding the salaries in the first place. And the fact now that they have you know, started paying ASU and they are not paying um, SANU, San, so that's non-academic. And they think that uh, when it comes to the universities, the academic staff you know, are the ones that are most important, but the non-academic staff have their role you know, their roles that they play in the universities. If they do not function well, the university as a school and as a body will not be able to function. Our students will not even be able to get their, you know, um, studies. And so they are saying that uh, they need to be taken seriously as well. They are also expecting that their withheld salaries be paid to them. And, you know, after this one week, you know, strike, they will now decide on what to do. The federal government does not listen to them. Okay, let me talk about the NDLEA. So NDLEA... Um, yesterday destroyed four clandestine laboratories that produced deadly meth drugs in um, a number of states command, uh, in, a, in a number of states. According to the public relations officer of the agency, Christopher Adebo, who spoke at the anti-drug abuse campaign rally organized in a number of North Senatorial districts, said that since inception, we have so far identified and destroyed four clandestine laboratories that produced meth in the state. This has become necessary because of the United Nations report on drug and crime in 2018, which says that 14.4% of Nigerians are involved in drug abuse. And in, and in the Southeast, the number ranks highest in the list of states that are deeply involved in drug abuse. Um, he also, uh, speaking earlier, the convener, the Gov. Saludo ambassadors also noted that the body is a volunteer group that helps to resolve issues and spread the issue of, um, to, re to reduce the use of drug abuse across the state. Um, so that's NDA report so from Anambra State. I have a um, wicked story. Um, according to the son, he had a swearing-in ceremony for the palm sex within all the agencies and the um, secretariats with, under the FCTA. And he, at that event, announced that there will be serious immediate reshufflement of directors across secretariats, departments, and agencies and he has directed that it should be done immediately. He said the head of service will then send out posting to the directors. And he gave the right out to the palm sex that as you are resuming office, either you perform or you get out. Mm, that yes. There will be no um, way that he will accommodate that. He also um, specifically addressed the coordinators for the Abuja Metropolitan Management Council. He said that they should perform and be lawyer, that, you know, this... The president lives in the city. There's no business that they should... There's no reason why they should leave sanitation and waste management to, 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 to prove uh, to be idle. They should pick, do, perform in their departments, uh, make sure the street lights are working, make sure every Abuja is, you know, working. Mm. That is the business of the Abuja okay. Metropolitan Management Council. Go ahead, Wake. Yeah, I was going to take the story about the um, soldiers going to the um, 11, uh, to the community that, that was responsible or they believe is responsible for the death of the soldiers. They said that um, they went to, they went on board five boats, five gun boats to the southern Ijo government, uh, local government and um, the Okuama community. They said that they, they raised houses, and um, they went to this militant leader's house, who they believe his boys were behind the killing, Amagbe, and uh, they uh, killed 11, according to them, they killed 11 people. Uh, somebody said he was about to bury his father, but he can't do that again because everybody is, in, is living in fear. Mm. But the soldiers have said that the community is just... Get, uh, telling stories is propaganda that they, they, are, they are even being complacent. Uh, no, no, complicit, sorry, is the word because they're not bringing out the perpetrators, the perpetrators yeah. and that their men were not only were they killed, they were, their bodies were debased, oh, their hearts were brought out, Jeez. and they said that some of their body parts were eaten. I don't know, but it's it is sad pictures. Story. Have you seen the pictures? I, 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 Very good. Yeah, pictures. I've seen pictures oh. over and over again. I, I, I just hope that there can be a peaceful 
resolution to mm. this because our country we don't we don't need this kind of crisis right now we do not okay vanguard our final paper for this morning's one is two we've not taken uh on the sea cable call that we take that story padding will be calls for review of 2024 budget you bought on circular road over 6,000 residents to be rendered homeless terrorists kidnapped 87 in fresh kaduna attack edo guba apc unveils idahosa running mate Nigeria doomed with new, without new constitution, says Anyaku Adebanjan. Others, Lord Bath in Delta, villagers flee, hide in forests. Let's take one story there. Okay, so I have the sports story actually. Nigerian wrestlers go gold wire in oh, Egypt. Yeah. So our wrestlers are doing well in the African Games. And um, the, our Olympic silver medalist, Commonwealth champion, blessing Oboro Dudu, beats Husman Badran of Egypt 12-2. To, to win her 14th African crown. Also, um, Odoayo Ade Kuroye, um, outclassed Chiama Aosi of Egypt by a pinfall to win her eighth African title. She earned 10,000 points a win that ensures that she tops the 57 kg ranking. Christiana Agusoya capitalized on her remarkable performance at the African Games by defeating Charaz Ayachi of Tunisia 10-0 superiority in 53 kg to win gold as well. Similarly, Kola Wali Esther in 62 kg outshone Farah Hussein of Egypt to win 11-0 to win her second African mm. senior title. And so we're just carrying gold like that all the way. We have um, uh, Hannah Ruben also who beats we have to go Tunisia. Congratulations yeah. to all the athletes for doing athletes. great. Mm. That's all we can take on Front Page Review this morning. When we come back, we'll move on to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome to VR Entertainment. What would you like to order from our menu today? We have the regular. So let me go and look for my jam. So my 220 was 320. I suppose don't be one better. Oh, no, you At this point, I contest my jam. I, 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 I want to close I, I, the show. I can go. I can. Yeah, that's I can all we like can take. I choose to exactly take. close the show. You for that. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, number one, unavailable by David on featuring Musa Kids. We also have today's chef special. Yo, shine, 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 shiny, yeah. Say, recap done, and it's time for number one on the countdown. One of Nigeria's hottest artists right now, his name is Rema, and this one is called Charm. Kick it. For dessert, and a beat of nightcap. We have the night time and online specials. I want to start the gym, yeah? But do you know one thing that's actually keeping me back? You should start the gym, though, you're getting fat. Cricket. <laughs> she says she does show dancing to empower women. What's the difference? There's a difference. Yeah, that's what she's You're already almost naked. You're already almost naked. That's the empowerment for me. Sex can make your relationship better. No. Sex can never be overrated. It is needed. Especially when it's good sex, too. Almost every guy has been with somebody's girlfriend. But they are for all of us now. This is. <laughs> That's why you're still single. I would not agree or disagree with that because I don't want to get into trouble. I, I have a home to go to. Your next question. Oh, you ready to fail? Who is the best? I used to so spoil <laughs> That woman. Bam, bam. Ah. Yeah, yeah, today, jam, yeah, jam, today jam. we'll go here. Yeah. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> Let's get to it. And don't be able to satisfy your cravings, yeah? <laughs> Stay good. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those 
we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most... Thanks for staying with us. Welcome to our sponsored segment. So, here we'll be talking about the Experiencing PR Annual Conference is a first of its kind business conference designed to garner insights from business executives on their experience using public relations strategies to achieve the results. Join us right now to shed more light on this conference is um, Tolu Lokwe Olorun-Dero, founder of Nigerian Women in PR. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Maria. Nice to have Thank you, you on the show with Thank us. Thank you so much. So tell us about the Experiencing PR Annual Conference. What is it about exactly? Uh, so when we, when we created the event, when we conceptualized it, the thought was when people are talking about public relations, you think about the media, just like we're here now. Um, and there's very limited knowledge about the impact of public relations and the results particularly that PR can deliver to the society at large and to organizations. And so we said, let's bring the people who have experienced PR who have seen the results that PR can deliver in helping them achieve their business objectives. And so that's why, that's why we started this. Um, in 2021, we had the first edition, it was virtual. We leveraged a lot on the um, virtual experiences we had during COVID because of the lockdown. And so we had the first edition then. Our aim is to platform <coughs> business executives and public office holders who have used PR strategies to get results. We want them to share their experience so that people like them, who are also business executives, will be convinced. Because at the moment now, when you're, you're a PR person, you go to an organization, you have to educate the client first, you have to speak a lot of grammar to convince them that PR works, and it's not just about being on the media. Mm -hmm. And so if you hear your colleague who is a business executive, who is a CEO of an organization, telling you that, oh, my PR consultant, recommended that I do this thing and I followed that recommendation and I got the result, then certainly you would want to believe their own testimony right. more than the person who is trying to sell your service. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's experiencing public relations. Yes. Come and experience it. Let's talk about uh, this year's theme, which is mm -hmm. um, Quiet Wars, mm -hmm. leveraging public relations for conflict management. What inspired the theme for this year? Well, so foundationally, any PR consultant, the first thing that you do when you want to provide advisory is to look at the surrounding environment, the business environment, the economic environment where your client is functioning. Mm -hmm. And for us, we look at global indicators, first of all to determine what the conference, what we should be talking about. It's not a fluffy title. Mm. There's war going on in Europe, there's war in the Middle East. Haiti just this week, I think just was the end of last week, gang wars in Haiti has broken out. And then across Africa as well, from 2021 till date, there's been military interruption in democratic um, government. Mm. And we th brought all of that together to say that something could have prevented all of these things. What if the leaders sat together on the table to discuss their issues? What if communication actually is what could have prevented these wars from breaking out? In Nigeria, last year we had the um, elections, there's a new government in place, new leaders have come up, changes in the um, heads of parastatals. Because leaders are new, you're working with people who have been there 20 years, 10 years. They are looking at you, you are coming from the private sector, you are coming to government, and it looks like they may be antagonistic, right? And so you must identify those issues quickly and be able to resolve them. It's the same in the private sector as well. And so in our minds, these are quiet wars. It's not something that is as big as a war in Europe or in the Middle East. Within your organizations, there's quiet dissent. People don't like their bosses. And as a leader, you cannot allow that to go on for a very long time. You should identify those issues and seek ways to address them. Yeah. And that's why they're quiet ones. Okay. And so how can you then use public relations and communication strategies to win those wars without it escalating into a real issue yeah. where somebody is either fired or nobody likes their boss? Or like that's we say in Nigeria, 
Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like we see example. Nigeria, a DG is fired, and you have their staff carrying placards to say we are happy. Mm -hmm. That's a quiet one that was left to fester, and it became a real crisis. Okay. So how does this conference aim to address conflicts in contemporary society? Well, first of all, I'll allow our speakers tomorrow share their own experience and also give insights as to how they're going to provide advisory to executives. So the way the conference is designed, the first and most important panel for us really is a panel for the business leaders. These are the people who have experienced PR. They are the ones that will essentially sell PR to our delegates. Um, they will share their experience of what PR strategies did they use to win their own wars in their own time. And then we have a second panel that is an industry um, panel. Um, that will then share new strategies. It's 2024. What the strategies you used in 2021 may not work in 2024 and for 2025. So we have PR experts who are future thinkers who can project to say these are the likely issues that you will have in 20 to, for the rest of 2024 and perhaps in 2025. And these are the strategies we think will help you to win those wars. Let me not preempt them. Um, we expect people to come tomorrow and come and learn those lessons. It's very important for everyone. Uh, we're very passionate about public relations. We believe that in our small communities, within our families, as a government between um, government and nations, there are critical public relations strategies and templates that people should adopt to ensure that we live a more um, harmonious and loving, live within a loving environment and society. So please come tomorrow to come and learn those strategies. Who are the key speakers and what topics will they be covering? Okay, um, we have our keynote speaker. It's the first time that we're unveiling it. Um, her name is obviously uh, Mrs. Ndidi Omuneli. She will be speaking as a keynote um, speaker tomorrow. We also have special guests who will be joining us from the UK and India. The president of the Public Relations and Communications Association. Um, from, and it's a global organization of 32,000 public relations professionals across the world. He will be delivering a special address tomorrow. Um, we also have the Dean of the School of Communications and Reputation from India. It's the largest of such organization in India. He will also be um, delivering a special address tomorrow. And then, of course, we have our panelists, including the country manager of British Council. We have someone from... Um, we have someone from... Oh, there are so many. <laughs> we, have, we have someone from um, one, of, um, one of the leading PR agencies in Nigeria as well. I mean, we know about Hilda Bassi, the lady who provided the PR um, support for her cookathon. She will also be moderating one of the panels. We have the um, external director of BAT. She will also be on the panel. I mean, we have about 18 speakers. Mm, there are yeah. so many. It's and one day. of the, yes, it's a full, well, we are also very time conscious. We want people to get what they want to get and go back to their work if possible. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, to 3 p.m. One key thing, let me just quickly mention that we are introducing this year, is an open mentorship chat. So yes, the conversation is focused on public relations, but we are focused on three specific things. If you're a young PR professional and you're wondering what is in it for me in this profession, what does my future look like? We have YBO, Yomi Badejo Kusoya, who will be having a mentorship conversation with a young PR professional who probably has two years experience, and they'll be having a conversation there. We have a business founder, or the founder of Oriki, for example, she'll be having a business mentorship chat. Mm -hmm. You want to start a business. How do you think of expanding? What were the issues she had? She'll be speaking to somebody who is the chief of staff for another startup, and they'll be having a conversation on that as well. So it's shocked. a full day. But I've been shocked if you didn't mention YBU, because you can oh, talk about PR in this country. <laughs> yeah. like, Certainly. So if you don't, if you don't mention YBU, then you've not started We've the conversation. Started, well, I mean, but I'm happy that he's part of this um, Thank event. You so but um, women in public relations and mm -hmm. their contributions, um, how would this conference amplify the work women have done in PR? Absolutely. Um, so again, when we started the organization, one question that was... Um, Constance was, why women? There's no gender in public relations. Why don't we have men in public relations? And we said, there's a lot of labor, right? Just generally also in the society that women put into the profession of public relations. That's not really visible. At the moment, we have up to 70% um, women as young entry professionals in public relations. Mm. But by the time you get to senior management, that number has dropped drastically. The women are not speaking out for various reasons. Their societal expectations, you are required to be humbled to silence. Mm. 
mm. right? You can't talk about your achievements on the job. There's demand, even at board management level. You're a PR woman. You still have to fight those quiet wars at that level. And so what our platform does is you don't have to speak about your results yourself because society expects you to be quiet. Share those results with us. Nobody's going to hold us as a platform. Right, to say you should be quiet as well. We want to amplify the results. We are very particular about the... It's not just celebrating somebody's birthday. It's about the results. And obviously, women have done a lot in building and establishing public relations in Nigeria and globally. The statistics about 70% women making up entry-level positions in public relations is a global statistics. Mm. When I started the organization, I thought that, oh, we had very limited women in senior management. Um, leading public, um, public relations and communications. But by the time we did, our, did, um, we did our findings and did some research, we found that there were actually as many women as men at the senior level, but they were so quiet. Mm. You want to talk about PR, somebody is coming to speak at an event. If it's not a woman-focused event, you will likely not find her on the seats. You will get the guy who wants to talk about serious things in PR. Where is the woman? And so one way, so while we have our experience in PR um, event in March, first of all, that is an indication that we're a women-focused organization because we're using our platform to celebrate them. But not just celebrating them because they're just women. We're celebrating them because these women have achieved a lot. We provide our platform, and that's why, for example, in our speaker lineup, it is more than 80% women, very deliberately. It's a deliberate choice yeah. to give them that platform. In the, we have publications as well. We have a book also called Experience in PR. It will be launched tomorrow. Wow. It's a collection of articles by Nigerian women practicing public relations in seven countries of the world. We have a magazine as well, also called Experience in PR. A collection of articles from public relations professionals, both men and women, across the world. We are focused on getting platforms, getting visibility for women practicing public relations right. in developing yes. economies. You have to wrap up. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> see that I love PR. I can that. speak on it. But I have to let you oh, tell us the event day, the time, Absolutely. and where to register. The event is happening tomorrow at the Civic Center. Um, registration opens at 9.30 a.m. Registration is free because we are very particular that everybody learns about PR. Um, registration is free, opens at 9.30. Conference starts 10 a.m. prompt. We don't know what African time means. So 10 a.m. prompt and then we end at 3 p.m. You can please register at www.ngwomeninpr.org forward slash experiencing dash PR dash 2024. Will there be food? Well, I mean, we are women. Yeah, we we got to eat. Women. Exactly. Yes, there will be takeaway packs. We have lots of gifts. Thankfully, our partners and sponsors have supported us this year. And so, yes, we will be giving out food packs Thank you so at much. the end of the call. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much Thank for you the opportunity. Well done, okay, Thank let's go on a short break now. When we come back, we continue <laughs> with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Just the seven of subject and signing a severity into my hands tonight on the social experiment called the seven of seven is Owen G. What is the name or what was the name? You see, I don't I want to make them better now. Rock Heart. No, of That's the of the goat when they brought it on stage. The name of that goat. Yeah. We should, ah. go, we should go there. No, no, that one, that one, easy now. Uh -huh. I'm just drinking this so that I can ask him my own questions. It's not because of Buga. He didn't get it. You, you know, <laughs> even you know. Okay. <laughs> Mention ten female stand-up comedians in Nigeria. See, 
Just mention their stage name. If you annoy me, you will mention their real names and the year they started. And if you annoy me further, you mention the names of their husbands and the names of their children. Try me now. Okay, okay. mention their name. No, no, let's, name. Name. let's just... Mm. No way. No, don't, no. Even name, the... real name, stage name, husband name, children name. Ten even, of them. Even the ten. That's a lot. Eh? That's a lot. Did I cut your question for you? Yes. When you were happy now, now. With your hands back. You are wasting time. We don't have time. See, my brother, hmm? before we go on a commercial break, yeah? you are stubborn. And I told you since. The fact that you play this in your hair does not mean. You understand? See this bad hair you are looking at. It's experience. I've suffered before you. By China. When you there during the military, I'd rather have a bachelor and a babang. You know what happened? I'd be Gen Z. <laughs> so that By Gen Z, I, call for I will move four out of ten. That's like... Four out of ten, they pass it. Come do this thing. Where booby you are on here. Look out! If I land you. Communications, Nigeria's leading independent broadcast company, has been officially designated as a great place to work. Over the past few years, we have transformed our workplace into one which is respectful, caring, rewarding, and provides great benefits to all our 500 employees. We thank our team for giving us the chance to show that partnership between employer and employee really works. TVC Communications, officially designated as a great place to work and now the only broadcasting and media company not just in Nigeria but throughout continental Africa to be fully certified. TVC Communications, a great Nigerian company, a great Nigerian place to work. Welcome to the sixth time of our and spiritual growth. Throughout this show, we will delve into the essence of Ramadan, exploring its traditions, significance, and the profound impact it has on millions around the world. Welcome to Iftar with Nima. tell you that is one of the big you ever as cute as they can so while they learn through play you can go about getting your pay the tvc staff crash open to the public from 7 a.m till 6 p.m Was 1998 Audience Choice Award and a nod from the Acapulco Black Film Festival in 1999 for Down in the Delta. She published seven autobiographies, three books of essays, several books of poetry, and is credited with a list of plays, movies, more than 50 honorary degrees, and television shows spanning over 50 years. She also won two NAACP Image Awards in the Outstanding Literary Work, Nonfiction category for her 2005 cookbook and 2008 Letter to My Daughter. After health issues for a number of years, Angelou died on May 28, 2014 at her home in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. In May 2021, it was announced that Angelou will be one of the first women to be commemorated with a new series of quarters from the U.S. Mint.
thanks for staying with us. So today our hot topic um, is from the DSP Bright Edafe, the P P R O of Delta State um, Police Command in Delta State, and he had tweeted saying that a father defiled his seven-year-old daughter, and uh, and it was the mother of the girl, who is also the wife of the father, who came begging and crying for the husband to be released because the punishment is life imprisonment and she cannot raise um, the children alone. Trust, according to him, he says, trust my boss, he vehemently declined her request. And this is something, I know Nima has always said things like this happen where um, there's a case of defilement, rape um, um, on ground, and then the perpetrator is let go because family are saying, let's make it a play. Let, let's, let's resolve it amicably amongst the family or is our, is our breadwinner or is our loved one is our family. Let, let's, not, let's, let's, um, let's find a way to resolve it Let's not wash our dirty linen. Let's not wash our dirty linen out there. You know, we see this all the time. It happens. And um, when we see this kind of case, especially when a PPR comes out to tweet on it, obviously he has a case at hand which is, which is um, similar to this case. The thing is, it's an opportunity for us to once again, highlight the importance of um, communal, um, uh, communal involvement in, in these kind of situations, especially in, child, in, in cases of rape and defilement, molestation of minors, um, the role of being Mrs. Somebody and protecting this institution called marriage at all costs. And it's something that many women, Nigerian women, are raised with to say, listen, whatever you do, just protect that your marriage. And in protecting their marriage, they are willing to allow a defilement of a child go uncovered mm. or swept under the carpet to protect that. And that's something I think we need to, is worthy of uh, our conversation. Please call us on the numbers on your screen, 0810764169090241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read the tweet. We all know this is like an open and short conversation, but it's always important to bring it again because it's almost, there are all various factors. You think educated people would know better, mm. but the truth is that all levels, educated, uneducated, exposed, on it, we, we all, when it comes to issues of protecting this thing called marriage, it's like all our sense of reasoning goes off, flies off the roof, and we're all about how do I ensure that the world doesn't laugh at me mm. in this kind of situation. So how do we mm. begin to talk about these things? The PRO is uh, neglecting a very important element in this, the fact that this is not an empowered mother. She is someone who needs help to raise other kids. And she is forced to accept his less, lesser evil or lesser hardship. Life with, without him or life with him and uh, help to raise the kids. So that's one important part that in our social law-making system we should be looking at. I know the Child Rights Act is strict on this. The, this is a clear case of life imprisonment if he's, if he's convicted. But what are the provisions for dependents when it is done to dependents? Yeah. So what will she do with her kids? How will the system help her so that she doesn't need an evil? Need to live with such an evil. If, if, I, if I must raise my kids, okay, let me accept what he is. No, she, if she must stand up against it, she must be provided something to fall back on when it comes to the dependence that she has. Maybe, I don't know how many kids she has in this story, but she certainly has other kids she needs to raise. What is the system doing for that? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's one point, but I beg to differ because we've seen wealthy people who would rather choose their husband mm. over their child that has been defiled. So it has so nothing this to particular do. Yes, I know, I know, but, but see, a woman who will choose this, whether it's poverty or not, is not what is in her head. She is thinking first of how do I allow this man that I am married to go to prison for life? What am I going to do with this child? It's not about how do I care for the child. You are not even paying attention to the emotional needs of the child and how damaged the child is. You are thinking how am I able to fend for the child? Or what will I do with the child? How will I now relate with this child? Because at the end of the day what happens is that the woman begins to hate the child and starts blaming the child for what has happened. So it has nothing to do with money. Now I understand your part where the government needs to like in other countries where they have a, a welfare system where they cannot put the children to be catered for we don't have that yet but i'm going beyond the mindset of i have money i don't have money i've seen a wealthy 
a person who this sort of thing happened in her home. And all she did to the police was, please, whatever we can, we'll pay to kill this case. They didn't even allow the case to come out. Mm. We'll kill this case. I will handle my daughter. I would have my daughter. And what happened after how many years was that she started blaming. In fact, the child had to run away from the house because she was blaming the child for what the man had done in the name of preserving marriage. I think women need to wake up. Wake up. You cannot birth a child and allow such an evil damage a child. And you are more concerned about protecting your image in the society as a wife. Eh? As a married woman. Marriage there. You have failed that child. Your first responsibility, and I tell people that are looking to get married and give birth, is to protect your children for as long as you can before they are out of your hands. Now, if you fail in that, you must own up to that responsibility that I have failed in this. It's even possible that this thing, they didn't just find it out. Though. Don't it has been know. happening and she was aware. But her marriage was more important to her than paying attention and trying to help that child. And that's why we commended that, uh, which case did we have here? A few? Dr. Ye Dr. Ye Femi or something. Femi. Yes. Commended the wife for speaking up because women, this has hardly been happening and women hardly ever speak up. Their marriage and their husband and their love or whatever it is they're getting out of, the kicks they're getting out of it, is more important to them than the welfare of their children. We need to wake up. So I have handled cases like this in the past where a woman comes in and she is the one abused by her husband. She is not empowered. When she sees the option the system gives, which is just punitive, you know, the system provides punitive measures to deter such reoccurrences, but not a home or something for her to help her deal with it. So Dr. Femi's wife is one unique woman. She's one in 10 million. Sure. She's a woman who is empowered, educated, and, you know, she's bold. Not every woman is in that position. I'm not holding brief and excusing these things, but I've seen it happen, and I'm trying to make sense of it every day. So I did a case for a woman, pro bono. We were halfway through, and she just backed out and yeah. asked me, are you going to take care of my children? Are you going to, you're asking me, if they lock him or they sack him from, are you going to, and the way she went on me, Initially, I was angry. I walked out. I was like, you wasted my time. You made me, you know, because it was a waste of my time. But when I went back, beyond helping her prosecute that matter, I had nothing else for her. And so that alone was why I just, you know, with time, it, it didn't make sense initially. But in two years, it made sense that I could not have done more than that. So maybe she should carry her cross. So this is why I'm explaining this. We have, we have this platform so that we, when we create systems, what um, Governor Fashola did as governor then when he established the sexual offenders register was take it a step beyond so that the system will know names you know we just we have systems we don't have it and overall it, it, it's stronger system except for lagos i don't know what delta state has so you punish the man he goes for life sentence and then his children and the wife when you leave them in that situation, what you have is that the wife will constantly, because you know, this thing doesn't happen yeah. immediately. And to also, find closure, she might just be looking at each other, ah, maybe the day they are suffering or something hard, she, harder yeah. is happening. She'll look at the child, the innocent child who has been abused. But when the system takes care of it all, that child is doing well, all her kids are doing well. Let me come to the, right exact, here. Also, uh, because in the issue what, of what societal is? labeling, oh, that's the woman that sent her husband to jail. That's the woman that. Uh, went to go and uh, her husband is in life, life imprisonment because women, we oh, you, know, you know how the society is going to judge them. and they label women and women have they have they have they they have they, they, they have trouble dealing with those kind of labels on them and that's what's why people try to preserve the lie and try to manage the light you know let me just manage that least nobody knows you know they say something in yoruba let's, let's just, just cover, yourself. cover yourself cover your sins so in your view Society has always labeled people. How do you think we can move away from this labeling? Because that's part of what is disempowering these women from speaking up. Hmm. That's a very tough question you have thrown at me. <laughs> uh, it's true because, really, the society we live in, they judge you for everything. Everything, for breathing. Ah. You, 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 do, you, you step like this, they, they, judge. they judge you. You step like that. They, so... It now comes to you are the one that jailed your husband. I mean, you think uh, Dr. Femi's wife, people are not abusing her? Of course, plenty. They're abusing her now. Even but his she... mother abused her during the trial. Mm -hmm. 
Even his mother turned on her during the oh. trial. You know, so it's, I, I would say, you know, because I've said here that, for, like for this kind of poor woman, we need like the, that human affair, woman affairs. I mean, women affairs. Women affairs. We need them. We, we don't need those kind of ministries. We need real social welfare, social welfare yeah. for people. That, that is what we women need. Women so that children. You don't have a job, you can register, mm -hmm. and then you are being taken care of. You are there, they're looking for a job for you. They are, education, your child's education is being paid, free schooling. We need that kind of thing. Until we start to do things properly, this kind of thing will, will happen. Will happen. Mm. She will <clears throat> go and beg for her husband who will continue to defy the child if they release him. Mm -hmm. Sadly, you know? If he's still alive, if the money, the entire money to raise the kids are in his account, he doesn't have trust, no insurance, she would later blame the child that you are the one that brought us here. Um, That's where you see the abuse extending. I'm not just, busy. I'm trying to... I, I get you. I'm trying to make sense of a of very what, difficult yes, situation. Yes, I get you. Because if you, if, you have, if you sit with them or you handle one of such, you will be tilting towards their pain or their fears. So this woman has a fear. We must, as a society, first of all, take care of it. Mm. So that she stands as the witness that she is. You don't want to have a witness that will come to court. After the prosecution have done all their work, she'll be doing, no, <laughs> didn't happen, not. You know, you don't want that. You want a bold woman who will say, my mm. husband or not, he, the father or not, but what he did to my child, I will stand against it. Because our fear is not that two, in two years, well, where, how will I fund their fees? Well, how, how will she go to school? How ever put the... <sighs> The children first in this kind of conversation. Thank you. My friend Nobody ever really now. talks about these children because it's all about how I'm society will yeah, so. No, the child too has been defiled. Morayo, so um, I look at animals, for instance, right? And they will say, I've gone again. <laughs> and I see the, 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 um, the mother hen when you pick the little chick. I tried it when I was growing up. The chasing I got. Hmm. The mother hen was practically flying to catch me. I didn't know what was happening. So I just held the chick and I was running. Yeah! And this mother hen was chasing me. Till somebody now shouted, leave the, leave the uh, chicken, leave the chick, leave the chick. And now threw the chick before the mother hen settled. And I see how they go. Because in my place then we had this open field where um, eagles would be flying from time to time. I know hawks rather. You know hawks, it's this... Um, yes. chicks. Mm -hmm. So I see how the mothers protect their chicks when the hawks are coming. You see them screaming and shouting and using their feather to you know, protect. And a woman who bets a child, who, does, who needs society to tell her how to protect her child, whether she's hungry or not, is not an excuse. We need to start, you know, Helping people to understand that your first job is not just to give belle born. No. If you know that your own is to give belle born, as the belle enter, you just the bonam, the bonam, the bonam. That's all you're about. You are not fit to be a mother. A mother should protect. In the face of hunger, the mother will say, take me instead and leave my children. But what I'm hearing is, hey, because I don't know how to feed them. What do your hands? Hmm. You can't walk. Uh, but you, you can't beg. Obviously. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. You cannot walk. You cannot beg. You cannot sweep. You cannot do anything. So make sure, first of all, that your children are sane around you. You want to rather stay in an abuse. That's because you don't even know the extent of that abuse on the child. We have a lot of young people who have been abused, whose lives just scattered. We don't, their parents don't know the extent of the damage. They excuse it with, eh, you know his uncle, this person now, he's the one offending for us. There's nothing we can do. Suck it up. And then these children go, yes, with trauma. We're not thinking about that. We're thinking about our survival. Uh, you cannot drink, Gary. Okay. Obi Adjulu, I will go back to... It's... You see... Okay, can I pause for a second? I have Balaji to hold it for a while. Okay. Balaji, thanks for calling. You're live. You're live. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this case talks about... We have a case attacked. I just yesterday, the woman involved was asking for advice. Of course, there was a, there was no penetration, but there was abuse in, in terms of touching and co from the father to the daughter. Now they've separated a long time, uh, for two years now. But the woman now came to us for advice because she said, no, this guy is just going for free and he does nothing on these children. She's trying her best, but she's making a little money. That what she wants is that she wants to get a lawyer and they'll get the man ticket with all the evidence. 
Now he's going to sign that you are going to provide for these children till they go to university and everything. You take care of them and everything. Or I take this evidence to court and you go to jail. That's the route she wants to go because they are no more married. But the guy is just gallivanting around. He's not taking care of the children. She's the one running around now. And all her efforts, you know, and she's just earning a little. And that's what she came to us, you know, for advice. So, what do you, what would you advise for a woman like this to do? She's not married. She doesn't even want to think that they are still for three years now. So, somebody like that, what would you advise her to do? Yeah, thank you very much, Balaji, for your comments. Yeah, it, wasn't it wasn't clear, thing. yeah. Mm, I didn't really hear. Sure, viewers probably heard her, but we didn't hear her very well yeah. in the studio. Mm -hmm. so let, let me add something quickly. Before we uh, wait, so we know the needs that the society needs to come up, you know, some of the solutions we've talked about, the welfare system, all of that, we need to start holding our governments and lawmakers accountable so that we have these systems. But before the systems come, is, is it, we, we need to start changing the mindset of parents Wait, but who you, decide you have to their children. You have to agree that it is not every woman that has a child is a mother. Not all mm. women. Mm. Sorry. It's mentally I fit forgot. to be a mother. Oh, if I you forgot. don't agree to that, mm. then you cannot understand this woman. Mm. She... Is, I, I, I've seen a lot of women abandon their children now. True. True. Without remorse. True. You know, they don't care. Yeah. So it, it, it's... Uh, uh, giving birth is not doesn't nat make you a make natural you a mother. mother. Yeah. It is what you have inside mm. that will make you a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, we have it's, to, we have, it's we have not to, all chickens, but all, but all hens that give birth. Unfortunately, we have to wrap yeah. up. And I know some we eat. I'd yeah. love for us to continue this com this this conversation because yeah. our guests are in. We are we are trying to start this um, topic so that we can you know to, uh, make up time for our guests. But I'm told our guest is in now, so we have to wrap up. We'll pick it up again. It's, a, it's an important topic because. Our job really is to continue to sensitize and re-educate and reorientate Nigerians on to making right choices and better choices going forward. So I think we have to pause this for now, but let me go on a short break. When we come back, we'll bring in our guests, one of our guests for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Show off your best skin this Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, my interview is <laughs> <laughs> still 7 of 7 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry a placard. It's about 5 or 7 to be honest because, ask your question, I have so much to speak about once we finish. We will not give you the time because it's 7 of 7. I will make the time now. <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 neuroplasticity. No, no, no. Based on he asked a question that was subjective <laughs> about high life, and he did not finalize his answer about a kuti question where there are only three of us. Editor, scratch this part out. That could out. have possibly <laughs> composed the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Hey God, my day. Was composed. By which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that your father? Oh God. I'm Shimon Kuti. No, wait. Wait, Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. Can
thanks for staying with us. As many of you know, it's the month of Ramadan. Muslims are observing their 30-day fast. And it's an opportunity for us to once again learn about the lessons of Ramadan. Joining us on the show right now is a senior lecturer, Department of Islamic Studies, Al Hikma University. Um, we have with us Dr. Sanusi Lafiaji. Yes, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you on Thank our you. show. Uh, we like to bring in sh um, sheikhs like you once in a while to teach us um, some of the important lessons of this season because many of us you know, have Muslim friends who are fast and observing, but we don't have an understanding of the objectives, the, the, the lessons of this. So we'd like you to give us some highlights of some of the lessons you like that Muslims are I would like to share with us on the, this month of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, first, it is um, important to know that fasting in the month of Ramadan is an obligation upon every Muslim who has attained the age of puberty and who is not um, excused as a result of um, uh, menstrual uh, blood flow or postpartum bleeding or due to old age or sickness, uh, among other things. So once you have attained this age of puberty as a Muslim, you must observe the fast. It's a pillar of Islam. And the whole essence of the Ramadan fast is um, explained by Allah in uh, Quran chapter 2, verse 183, just in two words, that you may attain piety. So Ramadan is to uh, inculcate God's consciousness in the Muslim. But personally, I believe there are about five major objectives uh, that the Ramadan uh, has come to achieve in the life of the Muslims. The first is obedience. When we're younger, uh, some of us will hide behind the doors to drink water and just clean our mouth as if we have not done anything. And I'll come out and say we're fasting. Mm -hmm. But now as an adult, you simply can't do that, not because anybody will see you, but because you just felt this is an obligation. So I want to be obedient to my God, because if nobody sees me, he sees me. So that is number one. Then the second thing also is charity. Ramadan is a month of charity. It has come to teach us that as a Muslim, you must be ready to give. The Prophet Salama said, man after us, so Iman, whoever feeds a fasting Muslim will get a reward of a day of fast. It will not affect the fast of the person you fed. So that's why you see that in this month, there are so many Muslim organizations that are giving free food to the needy yeah. just to be able to share in the uh, reward of the month of Ramadan. Then the fourth thing is unity. Muslims across the globe, wherever they may be, are fasting at this uh, point in time. Our Salat time may differ. Our, uh, you know, due to the difference in time zone, so we pray at different times. But when it comes to Ramadan, everybody seems to be observing the fast at the same time, despite the differences in the hours. Yeah. So there is that sense of unity among the Muslims. You also realize that in this month, even those Muslims in your society who you hardly see in the mosque to come and pray for the family prayers, you start seeing that the mosque will be packed full. So where is this... Um, uh, influx of worshippers coming from. They are Muslims in the society, but probably because of one reason or the other, they don't come to the to pray. So that unity is always there. And then you also see that Ramadan has come to teach us uh, morality. So Ramadan is a month of um, moral inculcation, a month of spiritual development for the Muslim. Because even the worst of the Muslims is in its best during this time. I don't want to mention names, but there are some of our brothers who are musicians, artists, uh, who like to sing lewd music with very vulgar uh, lyrics. Go and check their Twitter and uh, at this time. They are encouraging people to even do tahajjud, to do uh, charity. You know, he, 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 but can they still make heaven after? Because oh, oh. they're they only holy doing Ramadan. After that, <laughs> well, they're back. So, so well, they... you see, what, what is important for the Muslim is to be conscious of God. Making heaven is entirely uh, in God's hand. He is the one that decides who goes or who doesn't go. But as a Muslim, Ramadan should not be the only month in which we remember God and get closer to Him. Ramadan is a preparatory ground, actually, just to teach us that spiritual awareness and consciousness, so that we live. Uh, the remaining 11 months being God uh, conscious. You mentioned the exemptions when you were talking about um, Ramadan. Just, you know, when you recited the verse that compels Ramadan uh, fasting, you said women 
who are um, on their menstrual cycle, postpartum bleeding, you said old age. If all of these exemptions are clearly stated in the verse following that verse, why do we enforce um, not eating in public like they do in Kano? Okay, well, I think uh, it's important for us to know that non-Muslims are completely exempted from Ramadan fast, so which means they have the right to eat at any point in time, at whatever place they choose, and nobody should actually feel offended by that, yeah. because they are not obligated by the Islamic law to observe the fast. So, then even among the Muslims, you have those who are exempted, so why won't they eat? So I think uh, it's important for um, the Muslims to respect the boundaries when it comes to issues like this. Well, I think the only thing we can say is, uh, okay, please, uh, can you just uh, probably not do it uh, to uh, insult, the, you know, probably somebody might deliberately just want to say, I want to insult the Muslims and make my But I don't think anybody even does that. Nobody has the time for, uh, you know, whipping up sentiments. So it is important that we respect these boundaries. Those who are exempted from fasting should be free to eat uh, their food uh, in public. It doesn't affect anyone. Because even if I'm sitting close to a Muslim woman who is menstruating and she decides to bring out her food and eat, why should I feel offended by it? Okay. I'm fasting for God. It's none of my business. Okay. You should not be looking inside the food. <laughs> At all. <laughs> so um, I, I, I like the Ramadan spirits and I like how some of the Muslims around me are comporting themselves and trying to you know, make rights with God. And I'm wondering, is there any teaching in the Quran or, you know, in all of the services that they are holding and their prayers and everything that would help them extend some of these uh, piousness, um, being holy and righteousness beyond Ramadan? Because once Ramadan is over now, it's like everybody just goes back to status quo. Exactly. It's unfortunate that as Muslims, most of us have failed to understand the real essence of the Ramadan fast. It is not meant to just be within that month alone. It is meant to train us to understand that this is how we should be living our lives. God wants us to be closer to him. He wants us to be morally upright. He wants us to be good and kind to others, to be compassionate and empathetic to the poor and the needy in society. This is the teaching of Islam. So it is not meant to be used in Ramadan alone. Then after Ramadan, we go back to our former lives. So there's a need for the scholars to keep re-emphasizing this importance so that the, the spirit of Ramadan would continue to be with us even after Ramadan. <coughs> No, I, I, I just find it very amusing because we have been saying how that one month, all the Muslims, I have staff who they don't drink during Ramadan. Once Ramadan is over, fiam. They start, ah. In fact, they don't womanize, they don't do anything. But once it's over like this, they resume. They resume. So I believe that they believe that they have collected the blessings next level, mm. next level, but next because level. They, they did it well but they, they sustain them for the next level months <laughs> <laughs> so the next, after that they will now pray so when you look at the teachings in ramadan such as give charity refrain from falsehood and act number falsehood do not harm anyone the first time even said if anybody insults or attacks you tell the person i'm fasting so when you look at all of these teachings they are the daily uh, they are the normal day teachings of the sharia Mm -hmm. Don't do this, do this, don't do that, do this. So the, 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 Muslim, the Muslims need to actually understand this, um, this point so that we can have a better society for ourselves. Excuse me. You just said if you go and attack, attack a Muslim, and you don't do this, I'm fasting. So that means that when he's not fasting, if you attack him, he can give you a punch. Uh, well, no. Uh, I, I, I must uh, explain the aspect. You see, the Prophet was teaching us the significance of um, fast, mm -hmm. right? How important it is for the Muslim to be completely devoted to God. Mm -hmm. So he said, if any of you is fasting, he didn't even mention Ramadan. He said, if any of you is fasting, which means it could be at any point in time. It could be Mondays and Thursdays. And then somebody insults the person or tries to attack him, he say, I'm fasting. Now, this same Prophet also said, whoever does not refrain from falsehood, spewing falsehood and attack of falsehood, Allah is not in need of his fast. Mm. Right? So what it simply means is that even though you are pious on your normal days, be more pious in Ramadan. So it is just a re you know, re-emphasizing mm. the importance of Ramadan. It, there is no place in Islam where Almighty Allah, the Prophet said, 
if anybody attacks you unjustly, you know, uh, attack, you should attack the person back. Mm -hmm. In fact, Almighty Allah will always say in the Quran, one tafu, that you forgive is better for you. Mm. Right? There's a verse in the Quran, Almighty Allah said, we uh, made the law for the Jews, children of Israel, and nafsa bin nafs, whoever kills, the recompense is that the law should kill him back, which an is a normal law. An eye. An eye for an eye. All these laws are there. Mm. But at the tail end of that verse, Almighty Allah now said, but whoever forgives and yeah. lets go, it is better for him. Mm. So the teaching is that at every point in time, forgiving is the spirit that Islam is. My teaches. friends, it's violence. I <laughs> have not touched well, it. Well, I have not done it. Don't give for anybody. Maybe that's the spirit. <laughs> I have not done that. Don't mind um, what we, 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 We're, we're going to have to wrap up with you very soon. But I think um, one of the things I'd like us to, to learn from you as Sheikh is um, some of the, the things we see during this season. We have this. There's always um, the lectures, the Ramadan, and there's something about the last 20 days, or is it the last 20 the last days? days. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Give last us an, 10 days. Last 10 days. Which I know she will show even she, she takes out time for that. Mm. Tell us about it. Are, they, are these are these um, in the Quran or these are just people's ideas of what they must do during the Ramadan season? Okay, the, the entirety of the month of Ramadan is a month of devotion, but of course there is um, an importance, a significance attached to the last ten days of Ramadan. And the reason is that the last ten days of Ramadan are the best of um, uh, nights because in it is a night called the Laylatul Qadr. Almighty Allah said, Layla to call the Khurum al Bishar. Worshipping Allah in that night is more rewarding than worshipping him in a thousand months. A thousand months is about eighty three years and I think four months. Wow. So this is why Muslims are more devout in the last ten days than in the first okay. twenty days. Because we want to attain the blessings of this night. Uh, the Prophet okay. said, the last span of my ummah is between sixty and seventy. Only a few will pass that age. Only a few. Now imagine getting a reward for 83 years and four months just in one night. And then you're able to attain this probably in 10 or 20 years of your life. That's, that's huge. So that's why you see some Muslims will take a leave from work to go and do what you call etikaf. Etikaf means seclusion. Mm. Secluding yourself in the mosque, completely, you know, uh, disengaged with the outside world just for the sake of worship. Mm. So it is established in the Quran and it's not personal or something. Can, yeah, can I just ask this question? It's not to do with Ramadan. It's to do with um, when a Muslim dies and they bury them before sunset. Why is that? Okay, there's a hadith the Prophet said there are three periods that you are prohibited from praying and from burying your deceased. Number one, when the sun is rising or it has fully risen. Number two, when the sun is uh, the zenith, uh, the horizon, and number three, when the sun is setting, right? So during these three hours, the Muslims are expected not to pray because the first prayer in the morning is before the appearance of the dawn. Uh, the second prayer is when the sun has passed the zenith. The third prayer is just about an hour or so after that. Then the fourth prayer is when the sun has finally set, and then the fifth prayer is when the twilight appears. So these three hours, we don't pray there and we don't bury our disease because it is an injunction of Islam. However, there are certain reasons that may force the Muslims to pray or bury the disease even at this time. Take for instance, if somebody slept beyond the time of Salat and by the time he woke up, the sun was already in the, uh, at the uh, zenith, he should pray. Because there's another injunction that says whoever sleeps uh, and could not pray, he should pray whenever he wakes up. Uh, he wakes up. Then for the diseased, if, for instance, there is a situation that will not allow us to delay burying this person until uh, probably the sun has set, we can bury the person. We can even bury the person at night, if there's a reason for that. For instance, maybe the body will decompose, or maybe well. we fear that people would uh, overpopulate the area, will not be able to bury the person in peace, then we can do that. So there are always exemptions to this rule, but these are just the basic rules. I have to wrap up with you. But, I mean, we really appreciate it, because one of the things we like to do during Ramadan is to learn you know, um, from the Muslims, from the sheikhs, from scholars, um, to understand. Because one, when we can understand each other, we're able to relate better with mm -hmm. each other. So hopefully you can come back again before the end of Ramadan to share with us, or even you can talk to you via Zoom if I know you're far away from ignoring. Sure. But it's important for us to learn from the right people so that we all understand each other better. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We wish you the best for the Ramadan. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Let's go on a short break now. We'll come back and bring in our next guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right. Ladies and gentlemen, who can make time stand still forever? Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Glitch, <laughs> my No. <laughs> She, you didn't want me. me. You want me. No. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> you know so it, it's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah. I just said, let me take and give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on this segment is another guest, the chairman Ikoshi Sherry LCDA, the mayoress of Ikoshi Sherry, Princess Samiat Abolanle Bada. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Good to <laughs> Because the shake just left now. You're not just like, okay, good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. <laughs> good to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, so, how, how are things in Ecosi, Sherry? Because we've been seeing lots of work uh, in the marketplaces, a lot of cleaning up. Give us an example of what you're doing in this community so far. Well, uh, first thing I want to appreciate Almighty God because he has been my helper. He has been strengthening me. It is not even an easy journey, but he, at least I, I can boldly say Alhamdulillah for today. We have, been doing, we have been doing wonderfully well in Ecosisheri, both in infrastructure and, uh, you know, all of what people are expecting us to do. Like when you come talk in terms of roads, go there, we are called, we have been called Madame Project. Go to our market, go to different places. I think I will always say it, and people have been saying it, that Ecosisheri is becoming small London. Because when you see mm -hmm. the market places in Ecosisheri, Come to Ecosisheri now, we are having another health, uh, new health center, which is going to be a, a, a support of what Mr. Governor is doing in Lagos State. And I thought if Mr. Governor is doing it rightly there at the state, we are the local government, and as a woman, I must be able to showcase myself that this is what I am, this is what we are. Women must be fine doing something special, and we must be special even on our field. And that is why we people are really proud of me in my community. Okay, mm. okay Ma, well, before you came in, we were talking about a topic that happened in Delta State where I felt, you know, a woman wasn't empowered enough to stand up against a crime committed by her husband. What works, what empowerment projects are you doing to, you know, to improve the courage of women to stand up? Uh, firstly, you know? we men, we, there are things you think we, are, we need to, you know, made our women to know. Firstly, I, I clarify into five. Firstly, social, um, educational, economic, political, Economy. and physiological. And in this type of something, firstly, you, made, you must make them know that as a woman, you must, be, you must be able to stand upright. And this is not just sitting there and telling them. We have a lot of campaigns or seminars for our women because when I emerge as a woman, I said a lot of things are wrong. Women don't really believe in themselves. They don't think they can do it better. They feel without men, there's nowhere they could, you know, they can, they could, 
they, uh, they, they, they cannot even right. achieve anything without men. How, as a woman, I've made them, before, even in my local government today, you see a lot of women leaders because they've now known their right, what they can stand for. Like all my supervisor for WAPAN and uh, my special advisor for women, I empowered them and made them see reason why you shouldn't even, you should have to go to, uh, I mean, after crisis. When a woman is having problems, you must stand for them. And you must make them know this is your right. You cannot, you cannot you know, keep them short. Yes. You have to make sure they learn how to, you know, uh, talk even in the public. Yeah. Yes, as a woman, as a woman, you must learn how to be calm, you know, how to be, you know, talk in the public. But yet, you shouldn't take nonsense. Right. There are things you shouldn't take. Your <coughs> no is your no, and your yes, your yes. And back home, while you are doing that, even as a leader outside there, you shouldn't forget your home is your home because you have to train your children. Right. A lot of things are happening in the world now. Women you must firstly say, my own children yeah. must not join them outside yeah. because okay. they have limits. Yeah. And but if you, you know, if you are caged, if you cop all our own, they will not join them. Right. By the time they get to one level, so they, 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 they yeah. can't will continue to go down. Let me, let me, I know, I know it's inter I'll come back to you, you see. Uh, I know it's International Women's Month. And one of the reasons why uh, we're bringing, inviting all types of women is just to celebrate the work they do in the private and public sectors. And one of the reasons why you're here is just to see the work that you're doing. So we know what you've done in the markets. We know what you're doing in the, in, with the roads. Um, some people have been complaining concerning um, the, the inner roads, the fact that they've not really, um, they've not been touched, they've not been tarred. What are you doing to help us in those inner roads to be well tarred um, um, so that people can, can be motorable for, for vehicles? Um, <laughs> maybe it is not in your position. Mariah, right. sorry. Maybe it's not in your position. Go to our inner roads. We are doing wonderfully well. In fact, community are not complaining. At least I'm on here. They can call and immediately they call to tell us we will need your attention here. We answer them immediately. A lot of things are even on the pipeline. A lot of community, I think about five of them uh, of our CDA are asking for transformer now. I'm telling you, before a month, we are, before ending of this month, we must get uh, answer them. And talk of another thing we are doing tomorrow is going to be a day for our palliative. Because, like I always tell people, what we are passing through in the country now is a phase. Mm. We are going to overcome it. But as a public uh, office, uh, as, a, as a chairman in a local, uh, of a local government, if you think you are going to spend more, more or more on palliative. When it ends, people, the public will still ask, will ask mm -hmm. how do you, you know, manage their fund? Yeah. So while you are doing the palliative, while you are su uh, doing, supporting them with whatever you have, you it must not sense. forget your work. And that is why I'm managing everything together. Yeah. I'm feeling that I'm, I, we are sharing a lot of things tomorrow, Gary rice and uh, beans, uh, Ramadan and Lent uh, for the season. We are going to share about 6,000 people. <laughs> wow. This is not... You know, it's not new. We did it last month, but it's not... Public. It wasn't public. It was not... Uh, even before subsidy, we have started immediately. I might just say, local government chairman, this is a part of my agenda that I'm going to be sharing for needy, the elderly, the widow, and uh, the aged. that these are the things we have been doing. Right. Okay. So when subsidy now came in and uh, people are now, you know, okay. saying they needed this here and there, I said we have to... Add more. Okay. Before, about 3,000 to 5, but now it's about 6,000. If you see, initially, at times we go into the community to share, but when I now felt it needed, we needed them you know, to come again yeah. so that some people we have, uh, we, we have um, a positive impact right. in them. And then we don't even you know, support it with cash, but these days, when you are taking your own, we support it with, with cash. Okay. Which we felt if you come from a long <coughs> distance, 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 you can even, you know, yeah, use part of it. Even you can cook out of it. And that is what we have been doing. Tomorrow is going to be another day yeah. in Ecosystem. And as it has been so where they have been cooperating. And you will not ever see them in Ecosystem okay. fighting for it because they know even if they are 10,000, it must get to their turn. Okay. Yeah. Mayoress, you seem to be a woman of the people. And you've done quite well.
Thank you. I much. have a couple of achievements titles also to, <laughs> <laughs> to further prove this. But I want to know, because um, I like this idea where you are regularly making sure that your people are okay, aside from the roads that you have you know, following up on uh, their construction, the fact that you're also giving out food items. I want to know exactly where you're getting the funds from, right? Now, follow the question. Um, sometimes we feel like we're always giving the basics to people, but we need to empower. empower them. Aside from empowering them, we also need to put it in such a place that it becomes like a system. So, for instance, in Ecosy Sherry now, we have like a soup, a food kitchen, right? Where anybody who is hungry can just go and have lunch. You know the number of people within that EcoC, Isheri, local government, and you know those people who need to go there and eat and all of that. Now, um, why we're saying this is so that it's not like every problem we have as Nigerians, we just throw yes. money at people. We really do not have the data, enough data to know the people under us. Are you looking at doing something more systematic than just sharing food to people that's one then the money is it from which allocation are you getting this money okay thank you very much like uh, I, I even appreciate what you just said that are we doing some other things come to ecosystem we have an nice city center about 40 uh, computer so we are taking all our youth away from the street we have two session money session and afternoon session. so we take about 80 people every day mm. and uh, different kind of uh, you know um training. training we are having for them for ict and that is a class and it's always we are we, they, they, we are our light is always on standby mm. so that it won't affect even the system that is one then number two for our women you know some of them are, are, are traders we have supported them and we kept on supporting them with funds mm. at times we just randomly Okay, look at these women. This one is selling this. The market is going down. So we call them together or we go to them. This is what we have for you. This is what we, have. we are going to come back. Oh, not that we just take this and finish it. Mm. What we come back is that we see that your market is, you know, uh, growing up. We can still have right. more. So we kept on recording. Some, they have nothing doing. Those ones we felt we could, you know, trade, you know, learn a trade. And which we have started, and we have been doing that. Let me pause you for a second. I have a call, and hold it for a minute. Mm -hmm. Francis from Songo, Songota. I'm so sorry. Continue. I lost that call. Go ahead, madam. So, a lot of them, we, we, we are trading. They, look, the, the, we have a lot of machine, uh, different things. When we know you are genuinely a learner, and you are ready to learn, mm -hmm. we give, after learning, we must make sure we keep you with whatever you learn. And that is what we have been doing, because... It is very good to teach a man how to fish, not, we, not continue, but this, uh, the, the, the world we have now yeah. and what we are passing through now, you know, made us to do what we are doing, sharing more of palliative. Mm -hmm. And don't forget I said something, that sharing of the palliative during this time, not because of this time. I have started doing that before ever then. since I emerged, yeah. and people can testify to it. Mm -hmm. Even when did you emerge? I emerged 2021. When my the late chairman died, so I now, you know, uh, I, knew, I took over. So I now recontested for myself. So wish God made me, you know, to be the, uh, the, the, the substantive chairman. chairman. And the channel is going to end by next year, mm. which I'm going to reconsider by the special grace of God. Mm. So tell us about this um, health center. Everybody has been talking about that. I've not been there. I think Nima has been there. Somebody, somebody was telling me they've been there. You know, primary the, the primary health care center. Oh, wow. uh, what, 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 are they, is this in construction or has it been completed? It has not been completed. We have just started. But it's going to take about eight months. When you come in the next two weeks, we are going to put the two decking. You know, well, it's going to be raised up. It's going to be raised. It's going to be like three. I'm just eight praying months. the state, they shouldn't even, you know, snatch it from up because it's going to be one in Lagos. Wow. You know, all my, 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 my project is oh, always yes. like, wow, when you get there. So my, my, the motive behind this, I just felt the community is getting bigger mm. and my people needed to be taken care of. So what can we do um, to, you know, to make sure we can actually accommodate every of our 
people in Ecosisha. That was the brain behind Where does Ecosisha start from exactly? Because when you say that your own area, because well, I was going to say they, they have a street here that, they, that they've not done, but maybe it's not part of Ecosisha. Yeah. You know, your Shikomaya here, that, that road, I have been complaining about it for years. Okay, thank of you very much. Did you see your Shikomaya? Yes. Your Shikoma. Your Shikoma. You, you know there is a long grow, a long cellar. Yes. Do you know how it was? Yes, that one must it, be fixed. It was a very, yes. very, very, very the road that I should, you know, run for. That some yes. people will tell you it's a state project too. I did not talk of for Chikuma, which is which is very, very short. Yes. Which I said is in our pipeline. Yes. You know, it's in the, the pipeline is not built. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The, 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 the house was not built in a day. Yes. Is that, yeah, is it, it, I is it the the government. Is that the location of the government? They are using to do all of this. Yes. And we have depend, local governments. Yes chairman who are not doing anything else. it depends on how you manage it wow if you want to work if you have passion so you can confirm people. that they're giving you money state government they're, they're giving, giving us money you are getting money so oh, this is not taking dime from the local government money i will stay here and say it again this is a, a, a state that i will always tell you we are you know uh, you are free you know the local government chairman are very free to do whatever you want to do with the phone as a chairman we just like a governor in our locality, mm. they will tell you go and work. But what you, you normally do is to, you know, check and balance the idea yeah. for us of assembly to make sure we are doing it well. Yeah. And if you are not, like myself, like I always tell people, I have a name to protect. Yeah. I'm a little more of Kushofe. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> before they could, the, all the others in Kushofe could give you that title, you? the little more of Kushofe. Mm. Which means they felt you really worth it. Yeah. So that is that what is a lot of. Ask one from Shangisha that wants to talk to. Good morning. What's his name again? Good morning. Oh. Akumoje from Shangisha. Yeah. Yes, you're live. Go ahead, please. Okay. Well, I, I just want to say the woman, she's doing a wonderful in the country. Really? And I pray that God will continue to strengthen her in the name of Jesus. Please, we meet us and at Akumoje close, very close to Ogunai Kekke. We, it was the resident that dualized the street. So we want her to use a good office to come and assist us to dualize so that it can be a standard of legacy, please. Please, my madam, we are begging. We pray that God will continue to spend to you. So that's just my take this morning, ma. Thank you very much, Mr. Akumoje. I went to my tour for, oh, my for, for my show the other day, and I must attest to the fact that it's a very neat market. Mm, wow. It's shocked to see. But I saw constructions, and I also took feedback from the people in Is the Is she part of my YouTube? Yes, I, thought I, it was am the, I am the owner. So, Ma, the cost of the new shops is still a cause of worry yes. for people. Clarify what exactly yeah. is the cost and how you are assisting the old owners whose shops were remodeled to reacquire the new shop. That's the question. What's the inequity in each, uh, the fruit market? An international, uh, some old international market. Yes. If you see the fruit market, the, you could see fruit market, phase one and phase two is already occupied by the, 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 the previous oh, owner. Yes, okay. So the other place you are seeing, you know, I have been, I am trying to be guided, mm. not to just give anyone that way, but some, you know, uh, it has been sold out. Those one will now, you know, be topping it with another price. And that is why you will see the, the, the particular international, um, Seoul international market that it has not been expected to be fuller mm -hmm. as it was, uh, people are, you know, expecting. Because a lot of people, they just got the allocation. And the, way they, with the rate at which they are giving it out is mad. Mm -hmm. Because they felt that place is a market. And that is... Why we have been, you know, have been trying to control the price. No, no, I still have a lot of things on my table that we need to, you know, adjust because the, the guy, the, the, the guy that who, who assisted us in building said, uh, dollar said, it was the dollar increase when you bid for us. No, why are you not telling us? Dollar has affected the price. So that is one. Then two, for the my 12 we are building now. People, in fact, this is an, an idea behind that one. You know, uh, it, was, it, it was got born, and we now felt they can't rebuild them, themselves. So we now call them, we set up a committee. We have a platform, even the ideologia, the babalogia, everyone other than the platform. So they have a meeting. I didn't want to go about it. But while we are building, they are paying. So not until after building, they will now start looking for money. 
So okay. they and the 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 the, uh, the the developers they had um they had a meeting an agreement of how much we are going to and they all agree the one they felt they cannot you know uh, they are not going to take yeah. they will bring it to my table and I said no I can't take this for my people this is my well, of course I have to say this is the desire I want this is how I want it but now we are seeing it so it has, has not been any problem concerning that. And but I, I have someone who can afford the, re, the resale. So she had bought two, three stores in the market. Right now she has only one. And she's still trying to raise the funds. So are you on top of we, what the contractors are selling? My 12. No, I tell you, it has not been sold. The we, ones that we, you have built. We have not, we have not started selling. Mm -hmm. What we did is this. So what's the we had a meeting because if you have a previous owner, there's going to be a rebate for you. Okay. If you have your allocation. You are going to be a rebate if you are selling 1.5 for I'm just saying 1.5 for the if I if we are selling 1.5 for the public you are going to buy for 1 million. Okay. So that is an idea behind that. Mm. So well, that if you are if you do because the, the uh, previous owner they must be attended to before we sell to the public. Okay. Okay. So, so we have to wrap up very soon with you. So what um. What, what, what should we be looking for in the coastal area? What are the things that you're working on? And, uh... Well, what we should be looking for in the coastal area is that all our roads must be completed, inshallah, with Kudra to Lai. Then, secondly, um, the issue of uh, subsidy that I'm advising, I'm, I'm just, is an appeal to our people in the coastal that they should just take it things easy. Though in the coastal area, they have been taking things easy, for them, they have not been, you know, uh, like other local government, they'll be ranting, ah, so woke, so 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 but they know the government is trying, we are trying to support them. Mm. That I would just tell them they should take it easy with Ashwaju, but I meant you know, boo, that the real new hope is real. It's something that is real. A lot of debt have been paid, a lot of things that have run for years. You can't expect such in a nine months, you know, to just wipe away like that. And Governor Sonolu has not slept just because, the, because he wanted Lagos State. To get debt and to for all of them to be fine. Look at the ONGA code they did recently. Okay, he paid so so amount of money to, for the subsidy. Our people are the people doing ourselves. When you okay, bring 50 kg of rice. When you get to the feed, you brought 40 kg mm -hmm. after measurement. And you are now saying, who is to be blamed for this? Is this someone who that will still come and sit down and sell this food? No, it is we. We are the one doing ourselves. Until when we talk to ourselves, we must support ourselves, we must support the government. How can we talk to ourselves? We kept on appealing to our women. Because women are the, are the head of all this. Well, they are the backbone of the nation. If you want your husband to, you know, do it well, women will want, you, you have to talk to women. So we have a forum where we advise Different seminar. I have to wrap up with you right now, but I have to ask you one last question. Okay. Are you accessible? Because people just see you. Ah, this one is it difficult to see her. We may your rest. Hey, I don't want to allow. Can they just enter your office and say, Ah, I want to Everyone, see you? Everyone, you know that. You yourself know that. My office is at, I, I close by nine o'clock, ten o'clock. I'm the only council chairman. I can say it anywhere. That goes to office every day, every day of my you life. You still live in your council? I live, live in, in the banana I, live, I don't live. I live in my <laughs> local government. I cannot even stay in Ireland. Okay. If that is not me. Okay, I am proud of you, Kosti Sherry. I'm an Kosti Sherry. Just check it. Well, and well. I'm proud of them. <laughs> all right. That's all. Thank I'm you so much. Thank you very <laughs> much. For coming on the show. I appreciate you. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.